Well, instead of getting over the 2016 election, some Democratic lawmakers are getting more ambitious in claiming that the Republican Party secretly swears allegiance to Moscow. True story. Yesterday, Congresswoman Maxine Waters of Los Angeles floated this theory. The Congressman Jason Chaffetz is retiring because he's a Russian agent and fears being exposed. Watch this. There is a lot of speculation about what he's doing. Uh, there are those who are told that he's trying to position himself to run for higher office, and I think it's for governor. There are those who think that he, in some ways, has some connections to what is going well, on uh, in the Ukraine and perhaps in I, uh, Russia itself, and knows something about all I, of this. <laughs> Poor Chris Hayes over at MSNBC. Cut short the interview. It got that crazy. Meanwhile, a new poll by ABC and The Washington Post shows that Americans are dividing into two camps, each with its own beliefs about how espionage may have swayed the last election. 39% of Americans believe Russia influenced that election with the knowledge and assistance of Donald Trump. On the flip side, 32% of Americans believed that President Obama spied on Donald Trump as a candidate. Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney represents New York, and he joins us now to sort this all out. So you serve in the same caucus with Maxine Waters. Doesn't mean you're responsible for everything she says, but I think it's fair to ask you, what do you think of that? Well, sure. Well, I say enough uh, dumb stuff on my own, so I, I have trouble defending other people's statements. But can I say something nice about you before you jump all over me? Congratulations on the new uh, time slot. Well, thank you. And the ratings and the book and whatever else, whatever other world you're conquering. When you've week. got the Kremlin on your side, nothing is impossible. Okay? <laughs> we knew you had a secret. <laughs> so, but Maxine, I mean, let's be, you know, I don't want to beat up on Maxine Waters. But I think it's fair to ask you about her statement. Do you think it's possible that Jason Chaffetz is a secret agent of Vladimir Putin and that he's retiring, like Kim Philby, to go back to Russia. No, I don't. And uh, nor did she say that, by the way. But, but, but I, Maxine's a friend and I'll let her speak for herself. I do think it is important to note that um, it, was, it was delightful to see two uh, members of Congress from either party agreeing about something. And the chairman, the Republican chairman, was agreeing with the ranking member Elijah Cummings that what Michael Flynn did was very serious, probably illegal. And we need to get to the bottom of it. I think that's a good thing. Yeah, I agree. I think what Michael Flynn did was awful, actually. Well, I, mean, I, can, I can say that. But that's not the extent of what Democrats are saying. So to make a fact-based argument against someone's behavior is totally within bounds. But to start creating an incredibly elaborate theory to explain an event that can be explained with obvious facts, like the last election, Hillary ran a bad campaign, Trump had the support of the middle class, to attribute that to the unseen hand of the Kremlin seems kind of demented, doesn't well, it? Well, look, I, I wouldn't start characterizing uh, someone saying something on TV on one of these shows. As you know, because you do this very well, right. uh, a, lot of, a lot of words get uh, said on these shows. Let me tell you what I think is Wait, important. Wait, but hold on. She's, is, not a, she's not a talk show host. She's not on some radio show. She's a sitting member, a senior member of Congress from Los Angeles, one of the most famous members of the body. And she says this. And by the way, Maxine Waters is revered, as you know, among Democrats as an oracle, you know, as a living hero. Well, she has a very distinguished record in Congress, and I think she's but done a lot nuts, of good though, things. Right? And I think you should ask her about that. But what okay. I will tell you, and she's a friend, but I do think, as someone who was with, in, you know, look, I was with Chairman uh, Chaffetz in South Korea just, right? just two weeks ago. Spent uh, a full week traveling through the region looking at that situation, which is very serious. Um, I think he's a serious guy, and I think that what he said should be taken seriously, right. and I commend him for working in a bipartisan fashion. We haven't seen enough of that, and I think the substance of what he said is that there are serious allegations here, and we need to get to the bottom of it. If we had some bipartisan, fair fact-finding, then none of, nobody would have to speculate in either party. So do you not think that the FBI, which is conducting an investigation into this, is fair? Look, I'm, I'm happy to trust the professionals at the FBI, okay. and we should give them the time and the space to do that. The, 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 the director has said that mm -hmm. they are investigating collusion between the Trump administration and the Russians. We should let them do that. I do think it's important that we get some oversight from the Senate Intelligence Committee and the House Committee, and that be done in a bipartisan way. By the way, Mike Conaway, who's the new chair of the House Intelligence Committee, is my chairman on the Agriculture Committee. I know him well. I think he's a man of integrity, and I look forward to him working in a bipartisan fashion as well. So I'm hopeful we're getting back on track here. Some of us, and I think you joined the chorus recently, said it wouldn't be terrible to have an independent bipartisan commission. Maybe the rest of us could get back to doing real work like tax reform well, you, and infrastructure. The point of it would be to create a political circus, which is always well, the point. I've been fair. in Washington a long time. I know how this works. The FBI is conducting an investigation. If you don't think it's fair, you know, I think it's a fair point to raise. But 
A political investigation is by its nature political. It cannot be anything other than that. Here's my, look, I think all this is going to go away because we're moving toward conflict with Russia. Did I miss it? I thought you, I thought you yourself said you would support an independent bipartisan. Look, I said yeah. from the beginning, I want to know more facts rather than right, fewer so facts, agree of course. You. But what I'm very against is speculating on the basis of rumors. And you're seeing that. Are you familiar with a woman called Louise Mensch? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't think you're so. You're not. Okay, well, her views... She seems to be acting as a kind of oppo researcher for the Democratic National Committee. And she's made a series of claims about Russian collusion. For example, that Russia ran a sustained campaign against African Americans in this last election. Does that sound plausible to you? Uh, look, Tucker, you're asking me about a member of Congress who's not me. and you're not asking a member me about, of Congress. You're asking, no, that was Maxine Waters. Yes. And now you're asking me about a person I don't know about a statement I've never heard before. So I, I don't know that I'm going to be helpful to you. Here's, I guess here's my point. The left as a group, has embraced the Russia explains all theory as a kind of unified field theory of everything. Well, I and haven't. I mean, but, but, but I do think we should get the facts, and I think we can do it in a way that's fair. I'm okay with the facts. I do want to okay. know what's going on and why senior members of the Trump administration, admittedly, are receiving money from the Russian government. That's what Michael Flynn did. And Chairman Jason Chaffetz, the Republican he chairman, was not, okay. said it's probably Look, a crime. Far be it so for me to defend the actions of that's General Flynn, but he was not, in point of fact, a member of the Trump administration when he received this money. Here's my question. Well, can I stop you right there? Yes. So you're not concerned that the National Security Advisor received payments from foreign governments and lied about it because it was a couple weeks I before? I already said that I think what he did was wrong. Okay. I'm merely saying, let's not, and this is a prime example, let's not overstate it or bend the truth about it. He was not a member of the Trump administration when this happened. And yes, I think the distinction is real. So you're not concerned about it? I said three times I am. Okay. So but, let's not, but see, you're doing exactly what bothers me, which is you are taking a known fact and then spinning it into something that is false. He was not a member of the Trump. Look, you know, a private citizen does many things that are very different from what a member of administration does. For example, he invests right. in all kinds of companies potentially, right? So right, but when we vet those private citizens to be the national security advisor, I went through this process. I had a top secret national security clearance yeah. at the White House. They want to know if you've broken the law. He did, it seems. And that should have been known. I don't know if he broke the law. What he did was well, wrong. Well, the Republican in my, What he did was wrong. But look, I'm that. just saying, you just said so, a member of the Trump administration, and he wasn't, actually, when he did that. So, like, that's well, the thing. Well, well, excuse me, but when you are filling out the national security clearance forms right. and you're lying I get it. about it, you are a member of the administration. Well, we'll see if you lied about it. We don't know. But that's important. You are then a member of the administration because you start work before you have all your clearances. And if you're lying as the national security advisor, right. doesn't he, you're breaking the law. We're out of time. Come